All right, so we left off doubting every belief we hold, at least it seemed like, right? <clears throat> we can't trust our senses. We can't trust our knowledge of mathematics or conceptual truths. I mean, what's left? If, is there anything left? It seems like the possibility of the evil demon casts a shadow of doubt across all of our beliefs. Right? So it seems like unless we can somehow rule out the evil demon, which we can't, it seems like the evil demon is at least a possibility, uh, then the evil demon could deceive us about everything. So some people have thought Descartes was a skeptic, right? They thought Descartes was skeptical of the idea that we can have any knowledge, that there are any beliefs, uh, that we can know with absolute certainty. Descartes is skeptical about most of our beliefs. It turns out that's not true at all, though. Really, he doesn't want to tear down all our knowledge and say, hey, I'm skeptical that we can ever rebuild it. What he wants to do with this method of doubt isn't to advance skepticism. He wants to advance certainty. So he wants to find either a single piece of information or a set of information. He just wants to find something that we can know with absolute certainty. And then he doesn't want to keep doubting everything else and be skeptical about everything else. He wants to take that one thing we know with absolute certainty and rebuild from there, right? If you can find one piece of certain information, well, surely that'll imply something about another piece of information and then another piece of information. And he's hoping that by the end, he can rebuild all of our knowledge. But we have to find this starting point first, this absolute certain starting point. And so what Descartes doing here is sometimes called foundationalism. Right? So Descartes a foundationalist in regards to epistemology or his theory of knowledge. What he believes is that there are some basic beliefs which form the foundation of all of our knowledge. Right? There are some, it could be one, it could be a few, but there are some set of beliefs which we don't need to justify by appealing to some other belief, right? This is just the foundation. This is the bottom. It's the basic level. You don't need to go any deeper, right? So pretend you're in the situation with a child and the child keeps asking you, well, why? Why do you believe that? You give him an answer. Why? Give him an answer. Why? Give him an answer. Why? And you keep doing this forever with a toddler? The foundationalist is claiming that at a certain point, when the toddler asks why, there's nowhere else to go, right? You just say, no, there's, the why question doesn't make sense anymore. We've reached bedrock. We've reached the absolute bottom. There's no further explanations to give. This is where everything starts. It starts from this foundation. So hopefully that's clear to everybody. Right? And so all of this doubt, all of these skeptical arguments Descartes been advancing, like the dream argument and the demon argument, the whole point of those is to see if he can find a foundation. And so he wants to find a belief that he doesn't have to keep answering the why question about. He wants to find this belief, knows that it's absolutely certain, and then build the rest of our knowledge back from there. And so I think this is a pretty useful diagram, actually. Well, diagram, a useful representation of what foundationalism is like. <clears throat> so Descartes wants to find this yellow block down at the bottom, right? He wants to find that one certain belief, and then he wants to build, or the rest of our knowledge are these blue blocks here, right? And so he wants to start with this yellow block. He wants to see if he can even find a yellow block in the first place. But once he finds the yellow block, he can start stacking the blue, blue blocks on top of it, right? So if he can find the certain belief, he can start rebuilding the rest of our belief. And he hopes that through this process, he'll eventually be able to rebuild all of our beliefs, right? So even uh, reports from our senses, uh, certainty of the external world existing, <clears throat> trustworthiness in the sciences, he wants to build back absolutely everything. So, but first he has to find this, this foundation. 
So what might that be? If the evil demon exists, what foundation is left? Well, here's one of the most famous phrases from philosophy of all time, cogito ergo sum, which means, and here's the version I'm sure you've heard before, I think, therefore I am. So Descartes is saying, hey, look, I know with absolute certainty that I exist. Even if an evil demon is deceiving me about everything he can, there's one thing he can't deceive me about, and it's the fact that I exist. Right? Because, And this is really important, this next part, so make sure you're paying really close attention here. <clears throat> Every time Descartes thinks, I exist. Right? So you're sitting there, you're reflecting, you're going through all this doubt, and you think, I exist. Well, even if there's an evil demon who's always trying to deceive you about everything, when you think I exist, even if he's deceiving you, you have to be there in order to be deceived. So anytime you're thinking, even if the evil demon is deceiving you and giving you all of this false information, you still have to be there to receive the false information from the evil demon. So, you might not know much, right? Everything uh, that you believe about yourself and the external... <coughs> excuse me. Everything you believe about yourself and the external world could all be false. But there's one thing you know is true, and it's that you exist. Because the evil demon couldn't deceive you if you didn't exist, right? The fact that you could be being deceived, the fact that you are being deceived, means that you have to be there to be deceived. So you have to exist. Okay, I belabored that point a little bit, hopefully to drive it home and make it very clear for you. Right, even if there's room to doubt everything else in the universe, Descartes going to claim he found his foundation, right? He found the yellow block that he's been looking for. That yellow block is the claim, I exist. Because even if you think the phrase, I exist, and the evil demon is actively deceiving you, you have to still be there to be deceived. Okay, so there's our foundation, right? Uh, but, I mean, this isn't super exciting yet. So, I mean, it's it's very important but it's not clear <clears throat> how we're going to get here how we're going to get from here with this belief that i exist all the way back to our full robust knowledge of science and the external world just because i know i exist doesn't mean i know anything else right it means i know i exist and then the evil demon could be deceiving me about everything else so we found our yellow block but it's not clear yet how we're going to be able to start building up the blue blocks on top of it, right? How are we going to get the rest of our beliefs back? Well, luckily for Descartes, our foundation seems to imp <coughs> excuse me, our foundation seems to imply something else very quickly. So the belief that we exist very quickly shows us there's one other true belief now that depends on this claim that I exist. And that's that we are essentially mental beings. So we know we exist, and now we also know that we're essentially mental. And what does that mean? Well, it means that our identity is wrapped up in our mental self and not in our physical self. Right? So we've doubted the existence of the entire physical world. Right? Our senses aren't reliable. The findings of science aren't reliable. Our knowledge of math, so on, isn't reliable. Uh, but we know we exist even though we've doubted the entirety of the physical world. How could that be? Well, we know we exist due to our thoughts, right? Our thought that we exist um, is the main thing that we have. Even if we're being deceived, there are still these thoughts, and these thoughts still exist. Right, so even though we can doubt that we're physical beings because we've doubted the existence of the entire physical world, we cannot doubt that we're mental beings 
because we're having these thoughts which prove our existence. So that means we're essentially mental. <clears throat> there may be parts of us that are physical as well. All right, so look at yourself. You are a mental and a physical being. But wait, what Descartes is saying is that we could strip away all the physical stuff <coughs> and you'd still exist. Right? You could strip away all the physical stuff and you would still be there. So that means you're essentially mental. So at the end of meditation two, we have two important pieces of knowledge. We found the foundation, I exist. And the fact that we exist implies one other thing. It implies that we're essentially mental beings. So we've made some progress. Descartes completed his search for foundational truths, but it's still not very clear how we're going to get back to knowledge of the external world, knowledge of everything else. Right? The evil demon could still be deceiving us about everything else, even though we know these two bits of knowledge, these two facts. We know these with absolute certainty now. But it's not clear how we get from these two facts all the way back to the external world. And so in the next video, we'll see if Descartes can use these two bits of information <coughs> and build back our entire knowledge of the external world, right? So if he can do away with the doubt of the evil demon just by knowing these two bits, by finding the yellow block. He found the yellow block. Let's see if he can get everything else.